Carry on. <laughs> Twenty-one twenty, sorry. You're a star in my foot. Ready? Ready. Nearly. Nearly doesn't count. Twenty-one all. Oh! I'll be. Count ten. I wonder if Peter's a good player. You can ask him when he wakes. Well, he's been asleep nearly two hours and a half. He'll wake at 11. How do you know? I gave him a tablet. Well, how can you tell exactly? Oh, I can't tell exactly, but I know the patient. But do you know him? I think so. Well, then tell me something about him. Are we playing table tennis or are oh, we right. not? Right, your serve. Right, ready? Ready. Oh. Your game. Yes. Now tell me what you think about him. I think he's fascinating. So do I. Not biologically, medically. Have a drink? Love one. What do the books say, Doc? I see a dark stranger in his life. What's wrong with him? Yes, I think I do. Is he going to be all right? He'll be all right. Here's a drink. Will he have any more hallucinations? Yes. How do you know? Because this conductor promised to come back. Will that make him worse? Why should it? I don't know. Seeing things, arguing about his own life, talking to a non-existent man. He does exist for him. He's not going mad, then. His brain isn't being affected. Mm, of course it's being affected, but not in the way you mean. That's why I asked him about his sense of smell. I saw it was important. He's having a series of highly organized hallucinations comparable to an experience of actual life, a combination of vision, of hearing, and of idea. To a neurologist, that points to a direct connection with a sense of smell or of taste. Once that connection's established, we know where to look for the trouble. I only want to find out one thing more in his personal history, and I'll find that out later. Now, I'm not going to tell you anymore. Thanks. But how did he survive the jump? I don't know. If we could find that out and tell him, it would save him. It would help. But the main thing is for him to win his case. Are you serious? Perfectly serious. We must help him to win it. How? It depends on what message the conductor brings. But suppose he loses his case? Oh, that's absurd. If we see that he's losing, or we think he's going to lose, we'll find out the reason why he survived. Or we'll invent one. We'll have a couple of drinks, you and I, and we'll invent the greatest lie in medical history. Care for another game? I don't mind. Now, don't worry about him. You see that bell? Yes. He's promised to ring it if he gets another visit. Fine. Come on, yourself. He's here, June.
Eh bien, mon cher. Comment ça va? Not too good. Hmm. Not too good. Ah. I would not bother to ring that bell if I were you. Nothing will happen. A little trick of mine, you remember? After all, what is time? A mere tyranny. Well, let me know if you're going to do that again, won't you? This looks good. Very good. Do you know the author? No, but I often have a game with Philidor. Philidor? The greatest master of chess who ever lived. A Frenchman, naturellement. Come along and I'll introduce you. Good. Splendid. No, I mean, you've got good news for me, my friend. How did you guess? Well, you wouldn't try to entice me with this Philidor. Philidor. Oh, Philidor, if you had the right to conduct me anyway. True. Well? Speaking officially, I have good news for you. Good. You are to be allowed to appeal to the High Court. Splendid. The trial will be a full dress affair. Très chic. In three days to give you time to prepare your case. Better and better. Hmm. Do not be too pleased. Why, well, is there a catch? The prosecuting counsel. Of course, I am not permitted to offer advice or give a personal opinion, but... Well, who is this prosecuting counsel? Be prepared. For what? A shock. Well, come on, tell me the worst. Who is it? Abraham Farlon. Come again? Abraham Farlan. Well, I never heard of him. No. Never in my life. He lives in Boston. I've never been in Boston. Massachusetts. I've never been there. Abraham Farlon died in Boston in 1775. Does that date convey anything to you? Lexington, Concord? Exactly. You are good at history. The American War of Independence. Oh, he was killed? By a British bullet. Oh, he might be uh, prejudiced. Hmm. He hates your guts. And he hates the guts of every Englishman. And particularly, he hates this little affair with a Boston-born girl. It's not a little affair. <gasps> a big affair. He will hate even more. All right, I'll appeal against it. It will be no good. After all, we had to choose a good man. The honor of the department is at stake. No, what you have to do is to choose a good man for yourself. As defending counsel? Precisely. Can I choose anybody? Anybody in the other world? Anybody who has ever lived upon Earth? <laughs> Everybody is at your disposal. You can choose me. That would suit your book. But do not waste any time. Abraham Farlon is piling up his case already. You can choose Socrates. You can choose William Pitt. You can choose Henry VIII. Oh, Madame du Barry. She knows all about love. Mm, rather a one-track mind. You are a good chess player. Philidor. I'll think it over. By the way, I'd like to borrow this. It's not mine. It belongs to the doctor. Oh, doctors. What about them? They give me a great deal of trouble in my job. <laughs>